Fritz by Satyajit Ray. The short story is set in a circuit house, which is a dark bungalow generally used by senior government officers for short stays. It is situated in Bundi, a small town in Rajasthan. The story opens with a conversation between two friends named Shankar, Othar, and Jayantho. They have been childhood friends and after so many trials, they had managed to visit Bundi and explore it after decades. While having tea at the circuit house, Jayantho appears lost in some thoughts. On inquiring, he tells Shankar that the faint memories of his first visit to Bundi were rushing into his mind. Though initially, Shankar was puzzled with Jayantho's keen interest in visiting Bundi, when visitors normally would prefer to visit places like Udaipur, Jaipur or Chittor in Rajasthan. Though on a personal level, he had no objections to visiting Bundi after having read Tagore's poem The Fort of Bundi, for he felt familiar with the name of the place and felt excited about the prospect of actually seeing the fort. It was only during their journey by train to Bundi that Shankar got to know the reason behind Jayantho's inclination towards visiting Bundi over other places. Jayantho's father, Animesh Das Gupta used to work in the archaeological department, hence his work brought him to Rajasthan numerous times, for its are repositories of India's ancient monuments. Jayantho as a child, hence, had visited Bundi earlier but the memory of the place had not quite faded from his mind. He had always wanted to return as a grown-up, to witness any changes that took place in Bundi. Jayantho becomes nostalgic as he recollects the tall rooms, ventilators tethered to stings, the rose plants outside, etc. The magnificent buildings stood still there. A few similar furnitures that excited even before spoke about the timelessness of the place. The trees stood tall to provide shelter to the birds. Jayantho remembered all of these vividly. The two friends go on a sightseeing to the famous fort of Bundi standing amidst the hills. Time seemed to stand still in the fort's vicinity. Everything reflected the antiquities of the Rajputana era, except for the electric poles, which were the only signs of the new age. The old golden age of Rajputana craftsmanship appeared to have come alive. Jayantho had always been an emotional person. Ever since reaching Bundi, he had been unusually quiet and somewhat absent-minded perhaps the sights and sounds of Bundi had stirred a delicate chord in his heart. His palpable sadness didn't escape Shankar's notice. Jayantho reminisces about the large rooms and oversized chairs of the circuit house which used to make him feel as if sitting on a throne while sitting cross-legged. To his dismay, now everything seemed to have shrunk in size. Though, Shankar dispels his confusion by stating that he had grown in size over the years, hence that made him feel so. After tea, the two went out for a stroll in the garden. After a while, Jayantho seemed struck by the memory of a deodor tree that used to stand at the far end of the compound. He looked bewildered, trying to find the tree, and ultimately turns excited on finally tracing it. His euphoria takes Shankar by surprise. Jayantho's eyes were fixed on the tree trunk, looking into it searchingly. He exclaimed that he had an encounter with a European near the deodor tree as a child. Though, he struggled to recollect the entire episode. While having dinner at the oval dining table in the circuit house, Jayantho seemed to be remembering events from his childhood as the faded memories began returning to him. He spoke about Dilava, the place and also the Europeans lowly. He recalled the whole episode about his doll. It emerged that Fritz was a doll which Jayantho's uncle had brought for him from Switzerland. It was a foot-long figure of an old man dressed in traditional Swiss clothing. It wore a Swiss cap with a little yellow feather sticking out from it. It also wore a belt, buttons were on, had pockets, collars, socks, and even had little buckles on the shoes. Apparently, Fritz was very lifelike and bore a smiling face. It was very flexible, hence could be bent and twisted at will. He told Shankar how fancy he had grown off Fritz. Since he was not enrolled in a school that time, he had all the time in the world for Fritz. Though, he mentions that his parents did warn him to not overdo things with a mere doll. 
Shankar was all ears to Jayanthu's story. He questioned about the doll, as to what happened to it. Jayanthu revealed a shocking tragedy, that befell Fritz, in Bundi itself. On one occasion, while playing with Fritz, he had spilled hot tea over himself. In the hurry to go inside and change his clothes, Jayantho had left Fritz on the floor only. On return he saw that a few stray dogs had destroyed Fritz's face completely. With great disbelief, Jayantho assumed it to be dead. Eventually, like one does it for a living being, Jayantho arranged for Fritz's funeral. He wanted to bury it in a coffin for it was a European. But Jayantho couldn't make arrangements of it and eventually buried him just like that under the duda tree that he was searching for in the evening. After the conversation, both Shankar and Jayantho retired to bed at around 10. But soon Shankar woke up due to a slight noise. He found Jayantho awake with a look of anxiety on his face. Ignoring Shankar's query, he asked him if the bungalow inhabited rats and cat for he felt something walk over his chest, and that was what woke him up. He said that it was the second time that he woke up from sleep. Earlier he woke up after hearing an unusual shuffling sound from near the window. At this, Shankar looked around the room in search of the nocturnal intruder, but all in vain. Suddenly Jayantho shouted out of fear and showed Shankar the tiny, brown circular marks on his quilt. Shankar felt Janto's anxiety and tried to soothe him with some reassuring words. After some coaxing, Shankar fell asleep. Next morning though, Shankar could notice that Jayantho had troubled night with no proper sleep. He though that if need be, he would give Jayantho a tranquilizer to put him to sleep so that he can get proper rest. Soon after breakfast by 9 o'clock, they left for the fort for sightseeing. Jayantho was again immersed in his old memories of the place, but not concerning his doll. He sounded excited at the sight of elephant statues, the real throne and the beds. But soon all his enthusiasm began to wave. He quietly slipped away to the terrace. On finding Jayantho, Shankar noticed that he had grown lost in the old memories, not the cheerful ones, and stood absent-minded near a wall on the other side of the terrace. Jayantho expressed his wish to return to the circuit house. Though Shankar agreed to it considering his friend's anxiety, yet he personally wished to stay a little longer at the fort. Throughout their drive to the circuit house, Jayantho seemed restless and that worried Shankar. After putting in some efforts, Shankar finally managed to know what went through Jayantho's mind. Jayantho said that it was Fritz, who had been to their room last night, and it were his footprints on his quilt. Shankar felt annoyed at his friend's irrational behavior, but at the same time he got worried about his health too. He thought that Jayantho needed some nerve tonic to calm down his troubled mind. Furthermore, Shankar thought that in order to prevent Jayantho from turning mad, they should exhume Fritz's remains from under the duder tree so that Jayantho witnesses the doll being destroyed, and only then could Jayantho come to terms with reality. The idea appealed to Jayantho, though he did not agree to the idea immediately. He went for a bath, had little food during lunch hour, and then they decide to relax in the veranda. There was something airy about the silence that afternoon. At about three in the afternoon, they noticed the gardener. On Jayantho's initiative, Shankar went forward to strike a deal with gardener. With an amount of rupees five in order to dig around the spot at the far off deodor tree. Jayantho pointed at the ground about a yard from the tree trunk. He told the gardener to dig deep at less eight inches deep. Shankar shared a light moment with the gardener, but Jayantho sweated even in the month of October. He stared at the ground without even blinking for once. Suddenly, he made a strong sound. With a trembling hand, and a fearful voice, Jayantho pointed out at something under the soil. The gardener lost grip of the spade, and Shankar too gaped in horror, amazement, and disbelief. They gaped at a twelve-inch long, pure white, perfect little human skeleton lying flat on its back, covered in dust. Disturbing as the sight was, the story ends on a mysterious, questioning tone if Fritz had always longed for Jayantho's company.